Looks like we're live, guys. Hi. Good morning to everybody. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I can't see the, the viewers, but I'm sure we're getting some uh, good viewership for this particular panel. Um, my name is Pankil Shah. Uh, I'm a director at Neighborhood Hospitality uh, based out of Bombay. We have brands such as Woodside Inn, The Pantry, Woodside Burger Shop. And today I'm very excited uh, to introduce uh, some of our newest uh, panelists as part of NRAI's Insider's Guide, powered by Paid Pooja. Um, NRAI's Insider's Guide is a series of panel discussions on the various verticals related to the restaurant industry. Uh, today's panel discussion focuses on one of the most important aspects of our industry, our teams. Um, as one of the most manpower intensive industries, HR plays a critical role in any form of restaurant be it casual or fine dining, and QSRs as well. In this panel, we will try to provide insight into the various ways in which our teams play a vital role in providing guest satisfaction. We will also touch upon some of the HR policies and structures that are prevalent in different organizations, which can help all the viewers of this panel. Our panelists today come from some of the top companies in the restaurant industry. Um, I'll introduce all of them. today. Going first, we will have Niloy Chakraborty. He is the national business head for Wild wow Momos. Uh, Niloy Chakraborty has been a core member of the organization for over a decade. Uh, during this tenure, he has and continues to support and groom whenever an opportunity presents itself. Being on the pillars behind a people-centric organization, it is with utmost, utmost pride that he inducts individuals from all communities to be a part of the QSR space. Employee engagement, satisfaction and mental health are closely monitored barring his busy schedule uh, women empowerment safety and hygiene are prioritized he is also an integral part of the learning and development team be it from the inception of a product to the quality and guest service in the outlet he is a perfectionist to say the least uh, maintaining integrity identifying opportunity areas reformation and ensuring a seamless yet challenging path to organizations Profitability is one of his many achievements. Nilay, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. So uh, <clears throat> today I will uh, just uh, discuss certain thing that we have done it exceptionally from our side, uh, being from Wow Momo and in the QSR retail food retail industry. So. Uh, Obviously, apart from the payroll and the general HR, some of the steps we have always uh, prioritized in terms of uh, like uh, taking our em uh, employee, maintaining the uh, retention and uh, controlling the attrition rate as well. So I will just go through with certain uh, practice about uh, our HR uh, department from our HR department about uh, uh, retaining employees. So first I would like to say that uh, we do not consider our employee as a uh, uh, as a member of the uh, organization. Rather, we consider them as a stakeholder. They are the part of this WOW family. And uh, this is all about our vision and mission to become the largest Momo brand in the entire world, uh, competing and following the uh, path of uh, KFC, McDonald's, uh, Domino's, so uh, we want to become the largest Momo chain in the entire world. And uh, this is our uh, hostile view of HR practices. We uh, starting from um, joining induction, training, providing body trainer, uh, being in the outlet, be with them, teaching them everything from starting from, you know, uh, product steaming to the final serving, uh, uh, welcoming the guest. So these are the regular practices we keep doing it. The key areas to perform, uh, obviously, uh, our basic motto is to enhance the transparency, transparency between the uh, system, uh, between the customer contact, and obviously uh, improving the service as well. Because uh, it's not about product that we always uh, uh, concentrate. It is all about spreading happiness. Because uh, we always demand that uh, we might not be serving the best product in the world but obviously the most consistent product so uh, if you go to any wow momo outlet all over india whether it is chennai delhi kolkata you will find the best consistent product and always it is same so to maintain that it's a 24-hour uh, involvement uh, with all of our employee 
So uh, coming to the basic thing, best HR practices, uh, obviously I have mentioned post sensitization, uh, female safety, uh, complain, uh, listening complaints, self-defensation, uh, counseling session and employee satisfaction survey. So I'll just come one by one. Post sensitization, when I'm talking about post sensitization, it is all about like protection of sexual harassment. So we have a ICC committee, uh, internal committee uh, made by our HR team, uh, lead by all the female employees from the HR team. So what they do basically uh, in terms of any uh, harassment, uh, in terms of any sexual harassment, uh, first of all, that we listen. So we are available 24 hours. We, we uh, convey this message to our female employee that we have years. We are listening to you, understand, and then a series of investigation. And finally, uh, we take the action. So cases are there because obviously when female are working uh, inside the outlets, obviously there are certain things are bound to happen. So it's not about that, how to control the uh, problem, but how to solve the issues. So that is something very important and that we keep doing it in a regular basis. Apart from that, also, we keep conducting post session uh, in all our corporate offices. And apart from that, also, self-differentiation that I have mentioned it here. Self-differentiation is all about that we have uh, uh, we have a panel, panel of different people, apart from uh, like, uh, like a female athlete also, who are uh, representing India in Commonwealth Games in Karate they uh, regularly come to attend the session and they teach our female employee about self-defense. So this is a major steps that we have taken from last two years. It is being conducted in every month. And apart from that, also, we have counseling session for everyone, for all our employees. So uh, because we, we, we provide our 100% concentration on mental health, it is all about, uh, not about that the time when you are working in the outlet or maybe working in the office, Rather, it's a 24-hour journey. You should be happy from uh, happy, men mentally happy, uh, and that's what exactly we uh, always target from our HR team and the LND team as well. So, uh, for mental uh, counseling session, we have uh, uh, several counselor available in uh, all the cities, and employees are free to go anytime, free of cost. Obviously, they can attain the session, they can take the medication, and finally come back to work and give you, give your hundred percent. That's what exactly we target for. Best HR practices, uh, generally, uh, general practices like rewards and recognition, employees engagement, empowering a specially built individual and all these. Apart from that, also, I would like to mention here one uh, uh, more HR practices that we have uh, done it successfully from last two years is uh, recruiting transgender people in the uh, in the outlet. So a, a transgender people, why? Because we just want to break this gender barrier. It's not about only male, female, rather we have employed, we have recruited so many people from the LGBTQ community. Uh, and, and the best part is that they are successfully working uh, in different outlets. We have a couple of transgender who are working uh, and serving momos. So that is the best tape because uh, somehow or the other, we thought that uh, they should also be uh, coming in the front league and uh, they should be uh, they should be equal like uh, like others. So there is no gender barriers and we are just breaking that. Empowering employees. Uh, obviously, we keep conducting city open house in every three months for uh, all the cities. We are present in 15 cities right now with 500 outlets. So uh, we keep conducting uh, city open house, celebrating festival and national, national holiday. Uh, health camp, obviously medical health camp for their physical checkup, eye checkup. Uh, that is also being done regular basis. Uh, uh, we have a separate session called Ladies' Night. It's uh, every month we conduct uh, only uh, female employee. They they go there and they they enjoy, they celebrate, and we encourage them to do that. And uh, obviously, the departmental meets are also there. Uh, we celebrate International Transgender Day since we have a good number of transgender employee working in our organization. Transgender Day of Visibility. Visibility. There is another thing that also we keep. Uh, celebrating uh, International Women's Day, International Men's Day, and uh, International Day for uh, persons with disabilities. Since we have a good number of people who are uh, physically challenged, uh, different arm employee, so we have a special day for them, and we celebrate. Uh, we, we all, like everyone, celebrate this day. There are certain people who are successfully here working here. 
दे आर फ्रॉम द ट्रांसजेंडर कम्युनिटी श्रेया किरण शुभाशीष दत्ता मनोजीत पॉल टुम्पा बाग दे आर इन डिफरेंट डिफरेंट आउटलेट श्रेया इज वर्किंग इन अ बैंगलोर आउटलेट वाव मोमो एंड दे ही ही इज वर्किंग फ्रॉम लास्ट थ्री इयर्स राइट नाउ ही इज अ like a restaurant manager serving uh, happiness serving momos to all of our uh, customers and the end consumer uh, so uh, this is one that we have a target we have a dream that we want to make in this coming year we want to make one outlet it would be completely run through transgender starting from housekeeping to the manager everybody would be transgender and uh, this is another practice that we are targeting uh, so this is all about uh, our best hr practices and i hope that uh this entire journey where uh, you know the main main target is controlling attrition and retaining people retaining people does not mean that uh, uh someone would be resigning and after that we will sit uh for retaining him it's all about every day you need to provide them the best uh, uh best service and uh and in the meantime you need to you need to make them understand make your employees understand that you are always with them whether it is a personal need whether it is a commercial need whether it is a professional need it's not about money they look for another job it's all about that they feel uncomfortable during their workspace so you need to make them comfortable you need to make them happy and convince them that you are a part of this wow journey and that's what exactly we target for thank you very much nilo thank you very much i think uh, it's very impressive to see that uh, inclus is inclusiveness is such an amazing part of the wow momo culture because to build a truly organized truly world class organization we all know that you know diversity inclusiveness needs to be a part of the culture if uh, a, a world class organization has to be built and it's impressive to see that wow momo is focusing on all these uh, aspects so thank you very much um next we're going to be moving on to mr rupak gopal krishnan he is the training head for azure hospitality uh, an astute ho hotel professional with a vast qualitative and rich operational experience in restaurant management bar management training and development he has worked with brands like oberoi itc marriott fairmont and is currently working with azure hospitality private limited as training head for their pan india operations hands on experience in designing and implementing training progr programs for bringing keen customer focus high energy level and team spirit in the employees has been part of his job profile he has distinction in establishing optimum relationships with the team members to create harmonized environments uh, rupak over to you hi pankal i thank you so much good afternoon everyone uh, this team panelist and uh, all our viewers uh, i will just talk share what i mean is uh, i'll be talking about uh, uh, the role of training primarily uh, with relation to hr obviously training uh, and hr work hand in hand and it's a quintessential part of the hr uh, uh, process as well so uh, 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 basically i'll give you an overview of what how it is related and uh, what are we doing here in hr and how we could uh, help in terms of uh, easing the issues that we are facing today primarily with uh, relation to the human resource the attrition and all the those issues that we are uh, facing nowadays so uh, basically uh, the uh, first i will start with the need for training uh, and the role that it plays with hr right so um, we all are aware that uh, uh, training um, nowadays the the uh, you know, there are a lot of institutes which have come up and a uh, lot of people who are uh, coming out of these uh, colleges and uh, uh, but nevertheless there has been in, in the very recent past we have faced uh, this scenario where there is uh, a lot of uh, lack of demand in the institutes itself so uh, there are uh, people who have joined the institution i got to hear that there were 60% seats in the hospitality uh, colleges which were basically left vacant this year so uh, there is a dearth in seats i mean dearth in 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 in, uh, in participants 
in students joining these colleges and also uh, quite a few of them who are coming out from the colleges uh, the the quality of education that they are receiving and we we have to unlearn a lot of things and relearn once when they come on board on the floor there is a lot of learning process that we need to redo apart from what they were doing which was more theoretical than than practical so uh, the uh, the training plays a very very predominant role here so uh, we basically train and teach them uh, the skills of the trade and apart from that there is a lot of personal level development also we knew we we, we do with these uh, new joinees and uh, the workforce so the value addition is on a personal level also apart from organizational benefit that we do because since we know that at the sme level there is a huge lack of of organized coaching uh, which actually if we see is uh, pretty much non existent uh, at least my slide moving so um basically um, what we do here is that we do an overall development of an individual once he comes into an organization and we do an organized uh, we we do a uh, we make them learn and enhance a, a life it's a life skill enhancement on a total level and quality of an individual so uh, there is a growth in terms of uh, monetary a, as well as status and a personal growth in totality so uh, right if we primarily see 80% of the of the teams that we enroll are intrinsically demotivated because a lot of people want to go into either in our in our uh, indian educational system a lot of people would either want to join either the engineering or or the medical services uh, there are a lot of people who would not by choice want to come into hotelier so when they join they uh, to an extent uh, are intrinsically demotivated in the first instance itself and when they come in work with with our organizations they tend to further develop that same feeling and 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 uh, impart that further to other people so uh, training here plays a very significant role so the type of training that we we need to impart is that we basically have to have a very welcoming and exciting feeling and uh, anybody who comes into the industry today would basically want to know what is it what is what's in it for me once they join the organization so it's a it has to be a very meaningful engagement first of all so uh, uh, Rupa, sorry enjoy. to interrupt. Uh, I think if you want to just stop your screen share, we can reload it from our end so that the panel, the viewers can see the the slides that you've worked on and join it to the conversation that you're. All right. Having. Okay. Thank you. We'll we'll reload it on our side. Please continue the points you were making. Right. Basically, I was I was uh, talking about the type of training that we do. So the, the entire training process. To be a, a, a very exciting endeavor and a welcoming one, uh, where in the entrant uh, gets to know what exactly uh, is there in for him, and it's there, it has to be a meaningful engagement. So, uh, when somebody comes in and joins into any organization and he gets to uh, go through an induction program, training actually starts at that level itself, right? Here. And you see that a lot of organizations. Uh, we thought this would be the next second one. So in a lot of organizations, there isn't much induction that is done, and it is more of an on-job enrollment than a than a uh, induction. So once a new entrant comes and joins an organization, his training would start from the way that we uh, induct him into the company, uh, the way we treat him there, the kind of uh, information that we share with them. The kind of uh, uh, welcoming in terms of the kit, whether it is uh, his, his uniforms, uh, his ID cards. Uh, there is a whole uh, whole process that needs to be done prior to his joining, and and he and then when we relate a lot of information to these people about the organization that they are joining, so that gives them a that that is firstly it is the first step of their training 
by default into the company and then they feel as if they are welcomed and it's a, it's a role which the hr and training collectively plays which is majorly majorly significant and then on obviously then we go on to the floor and there is a lot of on job training which happens through the course of the day and the time that they stay with us uh, however these trainings also which because they have a very very uh, tough uh, and uh, demanding uh, career profession this training also needs to be handled in a way that it is very easy and non cumbersome so it needs to be uh, merged with the kind of job that they are doing and uh, it at lot of times it basically needs to be focused on behaviors of these people and and uh, before the outcomes that we want to basically get from these people when they are joining our organizations and how we could privately do this is that we if we uh, particularly figure out what is the training need that each individual or section of the industry would need then we can pinpoint those training programs obviously a lot of everybody would be doing a training need analysis because nowadays a lot of a lot of people are largely in the industry uh, having uh, difficulties and challenges in terms of communication for let's say per se or soft skills apart from just product knowledge product is something which now um, has to be there i definitely it is it is the most important part of it but uh, the 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 consumer is also quite educated and aware of of products these days but in terms of our training that we impart have to be a lot of behavioral uh, communication and soft skill that we do and Uh, obviously we um, we have our panelists who would be talking on the tech based part of it but tech is a, a, a major uh, part which plays in terms of the accessibility of these trainings now and uh, you know we whether it is uh, programs that are based on from a mere thing something like a whatsapp which we share uh, to anything that we do on on google drives and programs that we make technology plays a huge huge role in terms of its accessment wherever they are and at any point of time that suits them basically so this is a major part of it and then uh, there is a constant evolved learning that needs to be done because the trends are changing now in our market if we see it is it is a touchless menus now the the way of payment uh, gateways have come in with various different things so it is evolving in a large way so it has to be a constant not not the orthodox Uh, training procedures that we had been following since long time and at the end of the day anybody who comes into the organization it would be a basically we are also developing leaders within the industry itself so uh, i would like to go to the next slide so please that's what the training part is and uh, uh it, at azure i'll give a slight insight into what we do at our at azure hospitality in our company we basically have our in house uh, training program which we call the art it is the azure root training so basically this focuses primarily uh, more so on the base level because once the root of the pyramid is strengthened the top level automatically will go and strengthen itself so we put a lot of emphasis on the base level uh, on the root program so we have built a made a in house training program which we which we basically uh, run through the entire uh, organization pan india and uh, uh, apart from these core uh, uh, theoretical training we also uh, put a lot of emphasis on uh, culture building um, apart from mere training so uh, uh, the next side I'll, i'll 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 show you what basically goes into this but basically the culture building of a organization so it is not just a training an organization which works on obviously we if you see we call it the azure dharma wherein uh, we uh, have the uh, have our core values of the organization so whether it is uh, you know growth of the team uh, whether it is uh, giving uh, 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 whether it is loving our customers uh, making it without making excuses on a daily level learning constantly and and there are four primary core values which we follow from top to bottom whether it is from our corporate office down till uh, any of the uh, outlets and people that we have from manpower so it is we all want all of them to be accountable respectful uh, flexible and being at and 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 a team player so this is what we basically train and and uh, preach from 
every part of the organization so it is it is a culture building also apart from just mere training so uh, then we do a lot of uh, uh, we, we nurture training leads within the organizations who are basically our eyes and ears who impart these trainings pan india to different uh, uh, cities and zones and then we uh, have various tests and certification process uh, with which we do a lot of uh, internal growth mapping and uh, that is how we retain the talent pool and ascertain that people who are working with us are groomed and trained in a manner that we have we can internally grow them and not hire people from outside the organization and then we uh, there are certain processes put in place where we do uh, a religious monthly and weekly uh, check in with our line staff through the founders the promoters and the directors uh, the hr takes part in it and the training wherein we make calls to these people and then we figure out their issues that they face in terms of the operational level on the ground floor and uh, uh, every every uh, first wednesday of every month we do a monthly meetings wherein we do it is a communication uh, channel that we do in uh, where we uh, physically also connect with the teams and we do a small uh, session where we uh, celebrate their birthdays etc and uh, we uh, talk about uh, the challenges that they are facing um, we we talk a bit about uh, their their uh, profitability sales targets and stuff like so it's a way of communicating to the teams down below also right and uh, uh, this is what we do at azure in our company and then uh, i obviously we had to we we are also uh, discussing and talking about uh, what uh, the future role of manpower is going to be playing in 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 relation to uh, uh, to the hospitality industry so uh, i think we all are aware of this saying that we have heard that in 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 hotels and restaurants we are primarily there are humans who are serving the humans other humans so uh, irrespective of how much of of uh, uh, robotics and uh, you know automated systems would come in the the element of human touch whether it is a human smile uh, whether it is that human feeling is 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 the is is of very is of utmost essence basically so that would never go away in my, in in my view and and uh, once we uh, uh, you know, work towards uh, uh, giving a, a, a specific uh, environment, uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, obviously the remuneration is is a is a part of it, which is always been a challenge in our industry, where where we say that in terms of the work uh, profile, uh, the work pressure, the stress, the remuneration has never been compatible. So. Once we are able to make this balance of the work environment and the remuneration, obviously people will uh, reinstall their faith in the industry, and there would be more people would wanting to come back and join this as a career option rather than just uh, by chance. So these colleges which are lying vacant now need to be filled up and 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 back to track. So basically, whether we do, you know. Uh, 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 Niloy was also talking about a uh, lot of team engagement activities, which we all do across the border. And then we also make sure that we do a lot of performance appreciations and we give constant feedback. So it's a back and forth flow of info, uh, of, 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 of feedbacks, uh, of performance uh, reviews and opportunities and uh, spaces where we can actually implement and grow as a uh, from the from the owner perspective and also as an employee perspective so uh, that is what is basically going to reinforce this this growth uh, and take it forward so uh, uh, now that most of the teams are working as we know it, they are pretty much working long hours and 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 uh, um, extreme conditions so there has hr uh, plays a very vital role as being the the, the touch point for uh, any kind of grievance redressal, whether it is uh, whether it is with relation to uh, issues, personal issues that people working on the floor have, or it is uh, what uh, Nilove was saying, whether it is with uh, sexual harassment uh, councils that we have, there has to be a 24/7 hotline, 
uh, access to people working, giving speedy solutions so that they feel that it's an easy streaming process that is basically being followed, right? So that is the main thing. So like in the industry, what we say, if we actually come to think of it, I'll just close with this. Uh, I think we are running short of time also. That in the industry, like if we look at the icons of the industry, whether it is the Obroys or the ITCs, what they primarily do in terms of uh, attrition, what they would always have been doing is that uh, they have, they pay the remunerations on time, one thing. Uh, they feed these people well. Uh, number two. Number three, they have a very comprehensive training program wherein these uh, everybody has to go through that and, and willingly and unwillingly they are bound to learn things while, while they are working there. Right? And, and uh, on top of that, they have these internal programs where they have the executive development program or the step up programs where, where growth is basically uh, nurtured from within the organization. So once we certain these four things which is the remuneration on time feeding them well you know like i i ha had the great opportunity of working with with these uh, organization and robroys and stuff and but the general managers of the hotels would dine in the cafeteria right uh, as a, a twice or thrice a week so obviously they've been fed well right and then there is that there are strong internal training programs which from day one onwards, you have to follow them, and and your your growth from at each level is tracked. And then, uh, uh, right, so uh, so the training programs are there. Um, your your uh, um, pay packages, which are pretty uh, competitive in the market, uh, so you paid on time, you're fed well, you're trained well, and uh, uh, lastly, they have programs which basically internally develops them into the next levels of managerial level and eventually leaders. So we have people from these fraternity working pretty much in all uh, companies and organization in retails and hotels also everywhere now. So that is the culture that we need to basically inculcate and training and HR has to work hand in hand for that. That pretty much sums up my thing. Uh, thank, you thank you very you. much, Rupak. I think uh, our, our team runs on our uh, how happy our stomachs are. I think uh, that's quite important. And um, I think one important point that you mentioned was, you know, everybody, everybody in the restaurant industry needs to know about the products. Of course we do. Yeah. But training needs to move and evolve beyond that. Um, and it's, you know, with initiatives like you've mentioned that, that will keep attrition in control and keep our te teams happy. So thank you for sharing um, your insights. Uh, we'll move on to the next uh, panelist. We have Vishik Hiani. Rishi is the founder and CEO of Calm.com, and he's a well-known name in the media and consumer tech space. Uh, he's also the co-founder of Fork Media and owns brands such as uh, Curly Tales and Mashable. And he's also been involved in founding multiple successful startups like Urban Eye Media, which was acquired by the Network 18 Group, and Scootsy, which was acquired by Swiggy. Uh, Rishi has led two of India's largest uh, internet conglomerates as the CEO of Times Internet Limited, where he built Ghana and CEO of Web18, uh, responsible for the launch and revamp of all Network18 verticals like Money Control, Iron.com, Cricket Next, and Book My Show. Uh, over to you, Rishi. Pankar, hey, are you, we experiencing some sort of technical difficulty with the network? Okay, um, no. you're on. We can, we can, oh, we can move okay, forward. Great. No, no. Thanks so much. Thank you for the introduction, Pankar, and you know, thank you uh, for inviting me to the session. Um, you know, first off, uh, I've always been, you know, part of the technology disruptive cycles, and um, when I was working closely with the NI. I've been working with the NI now for the last four or five months. Uh, and we were really looking at how technology can play an active part in, you know, some of the issues that we were facing, especially around the HR manpower recruitment, acquiring talent, and also the retention of talent. And, you know, there were, there were a few things that uh, stood out. One is that a large part of India, uh, a large part of the cost is migratory. And therefore, you know, there, there has never been an initiative, a grassroots initiative across the
Rishi, I think we're losing you. Coming in audible? No, I think we're losing you from time to time. Okay, just give me one second. I'm just shifting sure. to another network. Sorry. <clears throat> I think uh, it's going to be interesting to to hear your your point of view as well because uh, you know everything is tech enabled th these days and uh, how tech plays a role in in HR is going to be quite interesting for our viewers and for me as well personally. Okay, I'm back. And and Welcome that back, Rishi. Go ahead. To do with technology. We had a technology glitch right there. So, okay, let me just present again. Great. Yeah, so so like I was saying, you know, we've been working closely with the NRAI. And um, the, the, the thought was, uh, you know, for the longest time, there have been solutions that have been more horizontal solutions. And they have like, largely addressed... Uh, maybe some part of of the the workforce, whether it's the blue collar workforce or whether it's you know the uh, management, but there hasn't been a holistic platform that's looked at different aspects of uh, acquiring talent, of retaining talent, and skilling talent from you know from time to time, and and that was really the genesis of Calm.com. Uh, so Calm.com is a platform which is a nationwide recruitment, skill development, and financial inclusion platform, and it's primarily focused for in the workers in the hospitality industry. Uh, the NRAI as a partner um, has onboarded um, a, a lot of large part of its members. And we've been working closely over the last couple of months, just like I said, to understand, you know, how do we bridge the gap between demand and supply? So we'll take you a little bit through the platform. Um, again, this required, you know, fresh eyes. We, we, we really had to get into why is it that people one enter the industry why is it that they they kind of have a, uh, holding back from entering the industry and then once they're in you know what are the what are the different points of uh, skill development of uh, of of basically making sure that there is a, a match between the the expectations that a person has when they join a workforce or join a company and then your ongoing career a career pathway where, where they actually see some growth at the same time, they add value to the organization that they that they join, and and therefore, uh, we looked at every aspect of this. So at the at the core is obviously the demand and supply, and that's where we've built a marketplace model for full time, part time, and on demand jobs. Um, the ability for you to actually shortlist candidates, and you know, not just be a database where you acquire uh, data, a data of candidates and then actually call them. We, we needed to kind of take that entire experience of shortlisting and interviewing and bring it onto the platform. So we built that. Um, a large part of the skill development uh, is now in partnership with uh, a lot of our, uh, uh, our skilling partners like the THSC and, and, and NSDC. And we are actually building out a platform now with um, the, the team at the NRAI. Um, on the other hand, we have access to salary back credit, spot loans, education, and various other aspects that we thought would add and be beneficial to the life of the employee and people within the hospitality sector. So we launched our app, uh, and this is now available in, in Play Store. We launched this about uh, two months ago and have slowly been gaining traction. We now do about 500 to 600 downloads a day from candidates that are within the hospitality industry. And our marketing efforts have just started. So we'll ramp this up significantly over the next couple of months. But the app uh, provides you with the ability as a company to kind of create a showcase of um, the best aspects of your company. So whether you want to highlight uh, your benefits or you want to highlight um, you know, the work environment, your peers, uh, people within the organization, the app lets you do that. And this was done largely because, you know, a lot of times people hear about jobs and hear about roles and then they do their background checks and stuff. But that's still not a great, um, it, it doesn't give you an overview of an organization, the culture and stuff. And a lot of times you see people leave organizations because there isn't a culture match. And therefore, you know, having that, having the ability to actually look at an, look at an organization 
and and make an informed decision that I want to I want to work for this organization or reach out to peers who are within that organization and figure out you know what, what you know what are the benefits uh, how does this assist you with your own growth path was super important and so that's been built into the platform um, largely uh, again we looked at what was out there and we realized that there, there were gaps so uh, a lot of times you know posting a ja job description requires your hr team to 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 have some sort of internal skills and a lot of smaller organizations smes didn't have that internally so we've created an automated uh, uh, platform for you to actually just put in your core requirements and then the ai engine writes your jd for you and posts it on our platform we've also got a matching algorithm that makes sure that you know the right candidates are matched to the right job and as we're scaling up our marketing you know and we get an influx of more candidates this this will actually improve uh, and you you'll actually be able to see candidates that uh, that effectively match from 100% to about 90% for a job role um visibility on geography again post pandemic we've seen that people want to work close to where they live and so far there hadn't been a platform that had taken a hyper local approach to show you jobs our platform does so you click on the maps and it shows you different organizations different restaurants different hotels that are near you and you know are more suited to to whatever your commute needs are uh we've used video audio in a big way because again uh you know to take the the need of having someone to come in uh in a physical uh for a physical meeting the first time is always a challenge given that a lot of people within the organization may have you know timings that don't match so we've used video and we've used audio in a way to in automate the interview process and the pre screening obviously happens through that um the interface has been completely gamified so it's got you know the ability to swipe left and swipe right and and i think all of those ux decisions were done just to ensure that we created a faster experience and something that hadn't been done before for a job seeker and for a for a job creator uh within each company we has been we know that there are different people who may be hiring and therefore we've done a rights management uh the ability for you to assign roles to someone in your department so if you're hiring for front of house uh you know you can have you can assign the role to a particular recruiter now what happens with that is you bring down the time it takes to go through hr and go through you know various channels it just takes you directly to whoever the reporting manager is and they can make their decisions right there on you know who they need to hire who they want to interview and who they want to shortlist and the platform has been built to allow you to have the entire process online so right from shortlisting to the finalization of you know various uh, where there's negotiation um, sharing of data sharing of documents all of that happens on the platform and then basically you can actually onboard them to through the platform um, the reason we we want to push for onboarding also through the platform is because then you know there there's a there's accountability and traceability a lot of times you see that people jump jobs um, for a little more or or you know they they come into an organization for a few days and then they kind of uh, move out and there is no accountability for for any of that so it was important for us to build that into the system um on the back end we are using blockchain to ensure that things like um your police verification your background checks a lot of that that you typically would require when you're onboarding a a a, a candidate is taken care of and you know while that's something in the pipeline we've already started with certain aspects um especially around the feedback loop that comes in from the employees and the employers uh and for for companies and for different brands that you know have would like to outsource the recruitment that we we've, we've created a platform again where we've used technology for 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 various aspects of this uh it's a recruitment process outsourcing option and let's let's calm represent your brand and there are multiple channels that we then go look at for acquiring talent uh with obviously our platform being the core but then the the goal is to become an almost like an ambassador for for the organization make sure that we're looking at the right talent uh looking at the right interview process and finally assisting with the entire onboarding so taking some of the heavy lifting off from our partners that's the rpo process and that's been you know for i think um now over the last couple of months um 60% of um uh, our partners who have signed up for the application have also signed on for the RPO uh, so that you know says that it's act, it is working we are seeing some traction we are, we are able to provide candidates faster um and um i think that's an important part of the overall value proposition so for those that require the self serve model 
you know, they use the app, they can post on the app and basically look at candidates and shortlist candidates. And then the, those that require a more hands-on approach from our organization, we're offering that through the RPO services. Uh, we, we realized that, you know, obviously retention is a challenge. So while the app takes care of the acquisition part and within the acquisition part, you know, you have a different kind of strategy for the freshers that come into the industry. So you need to constantly create new supply you know, new candidates come into the system because, again, a large part of this is that you're, if you're constantly hiring from each other's companies, then it's just a revolving door. And we're constantly going to see the, have the problem of poaching. So it's important that hospitality as an industry, um, you know, becomes something that is tempting for, for, for an individual once they graduate or once they finish college. And that was, you know, something that, that was super important when we were building out the application and the platform. So the, the, while the first part, which is the marketplace, has launched, the second part, which is the benefits app, is something that we are launching. Uh, we have run a pilot so far with the Chocolate Spoon company uh, and have onboarded 300 of their employees to provide early salary, uh, short-term loans, and basically with Onshority, who's a partner, insurance and healthcare. Um, I think in, in the first week itself, uh, there were two claims that, you know, were, were, that, that we took care of right away. So the the reason we had the pilot was to test test our system to test the back end, and you know now we feel that we're ready to to kind of offer the calm benefits app to the entire ecosystem, and there are four pillars to this. There is the early salary bit, and this is an important part because a lot of times what happens is within the organization you'll have people uh, that are blue collar workers or or you know who who basically are living. Um, uh, on a, a smaller income and they require loans for any kind of contingencies, any emergency. And they'll typically go out to a money lender and borrow money at a really high rate of interest. Now, just to fill the gap of that interest rate, um, they'll see that they'll take a job in for 500 rupees more. So they, you know, therefore they're very driven by the, the commerce aspect and the, the, you know, needing to pay whatever the gaps are rather than, you know, so why can't a company actually, you know, so we obviously worked with an NBFC for this, but I think as a value add, having the ability to actually plug into your attendance management system and know that, okay, this, this person, this employee has worked for, you know, seven days of the month or, or, or 20 days of the month. And therefore we should, we should be able to extend them a salary backed uh, loan uh, at a nominal or no interest rate is something that now we can provide. So our benefits app actually ties into your ATS or to, you know, a system where your HR uh, manager or anyone who is a direct uh, manager can approve or disapprove a person's loan and up to 75% of their salary can, they can be, can be redeemed at any point of time. So that is something that we saw, uh, you know, works. It's, it's something that assists them in many ways in the emergencies insurance and healthcare. Um, this is the first time that a monthly insurance scheme has been worked out, especially for this sector. So with Chocolate Spoon, um, it was about 130 or 140 rupees per, per employee. But that gives them a coverage of a lakh and up to three lakhs for accidental, uh, for any kind of accident. And it gives them um, a 25% discount on all of their pharmaceutical needs, any of the medicine needs. It gives them three teleconsultations. Now, the teleconsultations, again, are super important because... You know, healthcare is an issue, especially at this end. There is, there is, you know, burnout that kind of tends to happen within the HR, within the the uh, hospitality ecosystem. At the same time, mental health. You know, um, a lot of us keep talking about uh, the pandemic and you know life before and after. But the hardest hit was the employees within this organization. So for a lot of them, th there is a fair bit of PTSD still. You know, about losing their their career, losing their job, having to migrate back home. Uh, so I, I think it's important to address that besides obviously, you know, getting, getting stability and, and, and working on the, 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 the other part of this, the current workforce needs access to mental health. And therefore, as part of our uh, application, you know, we say a doctor is just a, a few clicks away. So the first part of it, uh, the immediate teleconsultation happens with a clinical psychologist or someone who's a therapist. And obviously, you know, if they need an in, a face-to-face -face, an in-person uh, consultation, then that's also enabled through the app. Um, a lot, of, a lot of times, people move from you know these migratory states, and we've been talking about 
um, you know, how to kind of recruit from these states. So there are various initiatives that we've actually taken off. But once they're in a city, a new city, you know, the, the most, where do they spend their money? They spend their money on the travel, they spend their money on housing, and they spend their money on food. So why can't we build something for the community and for the entire ecosystem? And therefore, we have cut deals with a lot of the ecosystem enablers, um, hospitality partners, travel partners, so intercity travel, your intercity travel, your food, your stay, all of that is, we've created deals specifically on the Calms app. Now, all of this is tech-based, you know, so that's why when we say, how do we kind of do this? So it's seamless. It's all tech-based. It, it required us to do multiple partnerships. You know, as a as a company, we believe that we, we want to focus on one thing, and that's the, you know, the acquisition of talent, the retention of talent, and obviously working with our partners to make sure that they've got the right talent at the right time. And we do want to get into some of the other things. So we've partnered with a with a established NBFC. We've partnered with Onshorty. That's a well-funded company. We're partnering with a lot of the other funded um, startups in the ecosystem to ensure that we bring the best holistic package to your employee. And and this goes a long way in the long run because we do what we're good at and they do what they're good at, right? Um, so a little bit on on how we are actually acquiring talent today for hospitality. Um, we've got these calm centers, and I'll quickly show you that. So we've got these little kiosks and touch points that we're doing, and we're piloting 25 of these across the country where a candidate can come in and basically do a basic career counseling. Uh, and that would include taking a few tests, um, you know, doing an analysis on what's, what is their background, what is their innate uh, strengths, what is their passion points, what they aspire to be, and based on that, give them a career pathway into, you know, what are the roles within hospitality that they can actually uh, work towards and what's the next step once they've, once they've identified that, hey, I want to, you know, I want to be uh, a chef, I want to be a I want to be in management, I want to get in marketing, whatever it is, we show them the pathway to that. And these points also double up as Suvidha centers. So, you know, we we're calling this Kamyabi centers from Kam to Kamyabi. And the goal is, before they leave their hometown, before they kind of migrate, help them with everything that they require so that they have a, this is literally a grassroots approach to, to acquiring talent. So assist them with the, the, the long distance travel, assist, in, assist them with, with any kind of interview process that needs to happen remotely. Um, all of the Aadhaar card, the creation of whatever documentation that they require, um, the background checks, all of that happens through the Suvidha centers. And for us, this, aids in also them discovering businesses and, and brands that they would have typically not discovered. You know, so a lot of them know they want to work with a QSR, they know they want to work with an uh, established brand, but they don't have too much background on the brand. And a lot of times it's difficult for them to even reach out to the brand. So this gives them a bird's eye view of all of the brands within the hospitality industry, people that are hiring, and basically what is the next step into getting a role within that organization. So as a pilot, we're doing 20 approach where we're available in every small town in partnership with the, with the local governance and the local panchayats, et cetera, to ensure more youth are, are coming in back into the hospitality space. And so these calm centers, largely there are 13 migratory states and um, we're working with field mobilization across them. So helping them with travel, accommodation, et cetera. Um, we've created an app called a freelance FFR, which is our freelance field recruiter. So again, you know, access to um, the network on, if you look at digital platforms, it becomes a little difficult because it's a very wide funnel to just target people within hospitality. While it's easier for me to get people at the top end of the spectrum, when you get down to, you know, your, your front of house and you get into your commie one, it becomes difficult to identify where these people are. Therefore, it's always best to use a referral network or people who are already recruiting in the space. So our FFR is uh, is almost like um, a multi-recruitment arm where we have people that have actually worked in HR or have worked in an organization or have a network of peers that they, that they can tap into. They're ready for a job within the hospitality sector. So we've got an app that rewards them, um, you know, part of whatever the commission is that we, we charge goes back to the field recruiter. Um, and it's a nominal uh, charge, that, but, you know, it ensures that they're incentivized to mobilize their network and to, you know, it, it incentivizes them to push people back into um, the, the fold. 
Uh, and we're working now with, you know, closely with NSDC. We've, we've just been certified for the uh, THSC three or four programs. And the reason we wanted to do that was also to look at rapid skilling. You know, how do you kind of, at least for some functions, kind of reduce the gap from the time of identification of a job role to, you know, fulfilling it. And besides, obviously, people who've got experience, when, when you have freshers, there is a gap. So you'll see that the training period takes about two, three months. And that needs to come down 15 days. How do we bring that down 15, 20 days? And we're working closely on, on, on doing that. So this is how we're acquiring talent right now. Um, for, as hygiene factors, I think all partners need to look at, you know, what, what are they doing actively? So besides job boards, obviously, and, and partnerships like what we're doing at Calm, uh, the, the word really has to get out there. And incentivizing your, your internal teams is actually one of the best ways to get good talent. You, I mean, I'm sure you've all seen this, but um, running an internal incent program, a rewards program, where every time there is a new job opening, your people from within the organization are actually referring candidates or, or kind of um, uh, or shaking their network to figure out who's, who's right is a great way to do it. But you need to use technology in a way where there is some sort of recognition program. There should be some sort of reward program for people who, who you know have some longevity in your organization. And all of those things you know, things that then need to go on. Um, the career pages, the SEO, the search traffic that comes in, you know, a lot of times people search for your brand and say jobs in X. And it's important that, you know, as, a, as on your own website or on your, your various social feeds, you're constantly obviously pushing these jobs. So our platform, again, will help you create a, a, a vanity URL where it's the name of your company.com.com. But at the same time, we can, we have, we can provide you with the ability to, push jobs onto your own domain. So on your own website, on your careers page, all of that can be powered through us. And with that, we actually will do social distribution. So the job then gets posted to multiple job boards, to multiple social channels. Um, there's a link that comes back to a WhatsApp um, a catch all address that allows us to answer any real time questions. And at the same time, we've got our own application tracking system. So this is a unique URL that we now generate and we can basically ensure that any inbound um, requests or any inbound kind of um, candidates that are looking at uh, uh, a job in your organization, find your organization or if they don't, they find out more about you and then we can send you a digest of, or, uh, of most of these people that are looking at a job in your organization. Okay, so these are just some of the future initiatives that we are doing and again, tech does play a large part in this. Um, the skill on wheels is something that we we, we feel uh, is something that will help with a lot of the evangelizing that we need to do. So, you know, like we said, getting people back to hospitality requires, you know, a little bit of marketing. So, so sorry. Yeah. Okay. So that's about it from my end. Uncle, you're, sorry, you're, you're on mute. Rishi, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's, I've always wondered personally, you know, what role tech is going to play when it comes to uh, being able to provide support from hiring to training to managing our teams better. And uh, it's great to see that we have a homegrown uh, tech solution for this. Uh, so, you know, congratulations. I think this is going to be key uh, for our hospitality industry. Um, before moving on to the to the last uh, panelist for the day, um, I'd like to inform our viewers that if you guys have any questions uh, for any of our panelists uh, after Haley's um, uh, uh, you know, presentation, please feel free to uh, comment, leave your query um, in the comment section and uh, for any of the, the panelists and we'll get to them. Um, moving on to our last panelist for the day, we have Haley Gandhi, uh, who is the key accounts manager at Paid Puja. Haley has been a part of Paid Puja for three years uh, with her exceptional problem solving skills and eagerness to learn about new tech. She leads the key accounts team responsible for providing around the clock service and guidance to Paid Puja's premium clients like Jumbo King Mumbai, Gianni's Delhi, La Piro's Chandigarh and Honest Gujarat. Um, Hili, over to you. Thank you so very much, Pankil, for the wonderful introduction. 
thank you so very much NRAI for organizing organizing this particular webinar today, which I believe is the biggest one of the biggest problems of uh, restaurant industry managing the manpower. Uh, I guess a lot of us are facing this as an issue today, and I am really sure that this is going to uh, be a big challenging problem uh, all across the industry. I will quickly try and share my screen so that I can start presenting. Uh, Pankil, are you able to look at the screen if you can please confirm once? Yes, we can see your presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, I will try and introduce myself as well once. Uh, so this is Haley, uh, representing Paid Puja uh, here. And uh, I will also try and uh, uh, tell everyone about what Paid Puja does. Paid Puja is basically a restaurant management system uh, representing and powering 45,000, more than 45,000 restaurants all across India. Uh, we have like more than, uh, uh, managing more than 35% uh, of the order volume from Zomato and Swiggy all across India and uh, are now also moving towards the international market, uh, providing the same sort of services uh, around the clock. Uh, while uh, a lot, uh, while all the other speakers have already spoken about the challenges that this particular industry is facing, I would also like to highlight some of the problems and I will also try and focus on the operational part of it. So while managing restaurants and uh, uh, being a part of this particular industry, a lot of problems uh, are on the operational side of it. And uh, uh, I will actually try and bifurcate these issues into the three levels. The first one would be at the owner level. The second, second one would be at the managerial level. And the third one would be uh at the staff level possibly the people who actually work around the clock at the restaurant and who have been managing and serving the clients with the best of their capacities so uh, these are the basic problems that this particular industry is facing uh what i would try and say is um choosing the best post partner and choosing the best technology uh how is it going to help uh, uh, maintaining the operation and how is it going to help you uh, better provide your services or possibly uh, do something that's exceptionally well for your restaurant or for your business. I will try and focus uh, on the chain outlets as well while I've uh, gotten an opportunity uh, to interact with a lot of brands uh, who are a part of this industry. Uh, these are the basic problems. It's like lack of centralized monitoring system, lack of skilled staff and high attrition rate, high amount of unmonitored staff and pilferage. Uh, lack of accurate business reports and the fifth one is of course controlling uh, the staff. The first point that I would try and focus on would be uh, what do you think are the challenges that uh, the owners uh, face and what exactly are the requirements at the owner level. The first one would be to know your business. At the end of the day, you want to know how much is uh, your restaurant doing, how much are all the outlets doing. Uh, and at the end of the day, obviously, you want to know the reports and you want to know how much is the uh, restaurant making uh, profits. You at the end want to know that what are what is the operational cost of running this particular business. So uh, Paid Puja is basically going to help you out, uh, provide all the sorts of reports that are available and all the sorts of customization that you would want to do uh, in order to run this particular uh, business. Uh, let's say you're closing your restaurant at 12.30 and you get to know the report for the day and the transactions that have happened for the day at like 12.45. You don't need a lot of time. You don't need the hardware. It's just a click away on your phone and you'll be able to uh, look at the report just like this. So it's like it is easy valuation and we've interacted with a lot of our clients. One of the biggest clients that we have, uh, which is based out of uh, Mumbai, is Jumbo King. They've uh, created the, their reports in such a, a great manner that uh, they've provide, provided their formats to their uh, uh, area managers, to their managers, to their billers. And they exactly know that this is what I'm su uh, supposed to uh, submit to my owners. And uh, the positive part about uh, the owners is they exactly know that these are the best performing uh, restaurants for me these are the least performing outlets for me and this is the best selling product for me and possibly 
the least selling products as well so you get to know the uh, crux of it and you exactly know what exactly do you need to focus on uh, the second point that I, I want to highlight would be pause for the managers uh, while there are a lot of people who are working into this industry and uh, there would be a lot of people who would be working at the restaurant level uh, there are billers there are managers there are waiters and I'm sure a lot of other people also who uh, are managing this particular uh, business. Uh, for managers, I'm sure they are facing an issue on uh, how do they delegate the task to the actual people? How do they actually, uh, uh, what do you call it? How do they actually see their productivity? How do they make sure that uh, the people who are working in the organization and the people who are working at the outlet perform to their best of the capacity? So. Uh, at the end of the day, you want to know and you want to make your team uh, work in the best possible manner. So paid puja is basically going to help you uh, see at the overall dashboard and see how is the team performing, what are the pain points for their employees, uh, if at all there are any operational challenges that they are facing or anything that they would uh, want to know at the operational level, possibly uh, the best performers and uh, the people who need to work on their efficiency. So I think this is one point that would help a lot of people and is going to resolve a lot of problems. Uh, the paid, paid puja being at the back end and being the tech support of the restaurant industry would want to uh, help employees to focus on the food that they are preparing, preparing and uh, the kind of service that they are providing. So it's like we would want to give the best sort of back office support that we can provide so that you can actually focus on what is much needed for you and the rest will be taken care by pay puja. Uh, the third and the best uh, option and the third and the best aspect of uh, this particular presentation would be knowing the problems at the staff level. So be it your billers, be it your waiters, uh, they all need to know what exactly is supposed to be done and what we've observed uh, while interacting with our uh, with a lot of our clients is not a lot of people are very well educated in this particular industry uh, a lot of them do not understand the languages because they've been coming from a different background or possibly uh, they do not have had uh, they've not had that experience to know these products and uh, the industry that they are into they are not that sac tax savvy people and they would want to be comfortable with it but are not provided enough support uh, for operating the systems well. Paid Puja basically uh, is going to help you with the best uh, trainings that we can provide. Pay the best part about Paid Puja would be uh, it is a very user friendly uh, software and it is made in a way that uh, the the lot of tasks which are done at the operational level gets easier and uh, let's say I'll give you one more example. Uh, a lot of uh, waiters or chefs who would be preparing it would not know a specific language. Paid Puja also gives you an option that whenever you receive an order and whenever there is a QOT that is getting printed gets printed in a regional language. Let's say they do not understand English. You have an option to get it printed into Hindi and I what better than uh, providing a particular input in the regional language that you are most comfortable with. We've also had customers uh, who are operating into multi-cuisine, uh, uh, international customers who are working into multi-cuisine restaurants. Uh, one of the uh, chef would be preparing uh, possibly Punjabi food. The other one is providing Mongolian food. Uh, and we do have an option to create KOTs into two different languages, making sure making sure that both the chefs are comfortable enough to provide uh, inputs to their uh, kitchen staff and uh, making sure that it is performed in the best possible manner. I think uh, making the staff comfortable about what they are doing is the most important thing because that is how they are going to uh, be comfortable working into this industry and it is also going to increase it is also going to increase their efficiency about working i'm sure if they are comfortable with what they are doing they'll be much more willing and uh, ready to provide the consumers with the best of their services so i think uh, creating a proper system for them uh, wherein they do not really have to put in a lot of efforts just to 
make sure uh, what exactly is the task that is supposed to done i'm sure this is going to give them an edge over what they are doing currently so i think this uh, these are the three things that i wanted to talk about while i quoted an example of creating customized reports there is another product that we have which is called waiter calling system waiter calling system is basically a small device that you can put in uh, on your table at your restaurant this is specifically for the restaurant which are dine in restaurants so there is a small device that you can put in in your uh, uh, table uh, three simple buttons that it has uh, waiter water and bill um while a lot of consumers are coming at your restaurant and they would want to uh, know how uh, and you would want to provide the best services uh, and they also want to have that privacy we've heard this from a lot of our clients and you can trust me on this uh, they have been loving this particular product and they have also got this as a feedback from their uh, consumers that it feels so much refreshing and it feels so really uh, great to us that there are no 10 people who are looking at us constantly not that they they would want to hamper uh, the experience it's just that they also want to stay there and check whether you need some services but then providing this particular device as a service uh, they are making sure that they have enough space while they are going out and want to have that extraordinary experience and it also is much more manageable at the staff level also that they exactly know that the table number 3 requires water table number 5 requires the bill it is like the to and fro that happens at the restaurant level by the uh, waiters is much much more convenient than what it is before this particular product is used uh, while well, i've also been talking about uh, uh, technical and technological aspect of it one thing that we've heard from our clients i think which is the best uh, solution that we can uh, provide is so we while we were interacting with uh, while we've been interacting with a lot of clients uh, i think one of the best feedback that i've received from one of my clients is uh so it is a very well known brand from mumbai which is a bar uh, sort of a setup uh they have a closing time of 1 am uh and uh, earlier before they were using pet puja uh, uh the staff level the staff who was operating on this particular industry uh used to take 2 hours after the restaurant is closed and a lot of times it used to happen that they used to miss the bus uh not the bus with the local train and which was the last local train that they they could uh, get is at around 2 am and they could not go back home just because uh, they were not really able to reconcile the reports at the end of the day um uh, after using pet puja what we've gotten as a feedback is they are able to uh close the restaurant at around 1 and they are able to close the operation by 1:30 and it is so much uh, pleasure for them to go back home every day it is not really about Uh, uh maintaining this particular task but it is about maintaining that basic uh, hygiene for your employees uh, that they get to see these basic things uh, at the operational level and which makes a lot of importance for them that they get to go back home i'm sure a lot of us understand the importance of this particular aspect and this is going to make them feel comfortable and be positive about what they are doing so i think these are the impacts that uh, uh restaurant pop make uh, on this particular industry uh, i think uh, these this is the comparison that you can see uh, how was the staff management uh, without pos and how is the staff management uh, going with pos uh, we will also be sharing this particular presentation once this live is over and you can actually go through this uh, basically these are the things that we wanted to uh, make sure that our uh, consumers and customers use just to make sure that we enable them with the best of the products and the services that we are operating with there are two more products that we have which is called suppliers hub and tweeto tweeto is basically uh, uh, an application which will help you with more than 50000 templates and graphics uh, it's like a lot of us actually uh, create these templates and would want to upload it on uh wednesday day when there's an offer going on or maybe on a friday when you would want to offer them with a special discount but then we are not really finding the time to create this particular tool tweeto is actually going to help you create this particular uh template and a one pager in like one or two minutes and you're good to go so basically these are the 
uh, additional services that we are providing which are which are going to give you, give you an edge over uh, what any other service provider is doing so i think this is it from my side and if at all there are any questions uh, i would be happy to take those questions and uh, we are uh, open for any Thank discussion we would want to have Thank you so much, Haley. I think uh, we oftentimes underestimate the value of uh, us a server spending time with the guests when uh, you know they should they are doing other things like entering the order, getting the bill. I so I think uh, the kind the kind of solutions that that you are providing definitely makes sense. Um, if there are no questions, I'd like to sort of end uh, this panel on just a quick uh, rapid fire. Um, and just get your ideas on, uh, you know, some blue sky ideas on the future of the industry, the future of HR practices in our restaurant industry. So if each panelist could just give one or two st sentences quickly on what you guys feel is going to be a great idea for the future of the restaurant industry. We can start with uh, uh, Niloy and then Rupak and then Rishi and then Haley. For me, the best HR practice is uh, to reach out uh, to all your employees uh, as much as possible and just make them convinced in this particular statement that yes, we are listening, we have ears and we are there for you and, and we are there for you for everything. It is not about only providing money, providing salary or uh, securing your job. It's all about that uh, we are there for you for everything. Uh, whether you need it personally, need us personally, or maybe professionally. If, if you can can convince this uh, to your employees, they will always be with you. So creating and uh, like uh, spreading more emotions uh, to, the, uh, to, uh, to your employees, uh, I think would be the best thing that we can provide from HR team. Okay. Rupa? Yeah, I, uh, well, uh, since it's a blue sky idea, I believe if, uh, you know, uh, we, if the, we could probably, uh, if could, I, I mean, I would imagine if there could have been uh, more government government recognition for the hospitality industry itself, which is majorly, majorly lack, lacking, we all would agree to that. Uh, and RAI is trying to do a lot towards this and try and, and be the connect. Uh, you know, and we also probably have a set norms with relation to work culture, standards, qualification, remuneration, and facilities. Pan India for all our hospitality professionals, which can't be altered by any operator, uh, which should eventually benefit both the business owner and the employee. Like, for instance, uh, we have a few of our outlets uh, out of India in, in UK as well, where there is a the grievance redressal system is is universal, and there is. A lot of transparency in referral checks, and uh, you know the, the there's an open market with regards to hourly wages and marketplace filtration, and the qualification within the industry is given a lot of weightage. So you can, as a as a as a let's say a beverage specialist or a, a chef, you can actually basically uh, uh, you know uh, for self and and uh, have a certain uh, you know tag. Uh, whether it is in terms of remuneration and uh, you know, uh, you know, asset value attached to you, so that could be one thing which will, which should probably help our our prosperity. Thank you, uh, Rishi. Sorry, I can't hear you, Rishi. I think you're on mute. Sorry. So besides the grassroots stuff that you, I was talking about earlier, I think you know that obviously is is critical in us getting more people within the ecosystem. So that's clearly something that's there. I think, um, you know, within our organization, we already have ambassadors for our brand. Uh, they work for us. Um, they, they actually have seen the benefits of, of that. I think creating some sort of scholarship program um, for their family members or individuals, you know, that might aid in getting you one uh, reliable talent fast. And obviously, you know, people who are, have, um, 
they've they've already done the background they know they know their relatives working with the organization and it's basically you're, you're assisting by creating a more of you know the family into the system and therefore they are more tend to have some loyalty to the brand and stick on in the long run so i think more opportunities whether it's scholarship for hospitality or scholarship for for them coming into the organization or even you know broadly various other uh, scholarship benefits for education is something that you can look at and and i think that would be a good one to start with Thank you, Rishi. Uh, Haley. Uh, while I totally agree with what uh, Rishi said, uh, providing scholarships for the education. One more thing that I would want to say about this is upskilling the existing uh, employees that you have. Because uh, being into this industry, I've seen people who started from billing a being a waiter, then moving to being a biller, and then moving to a manager, area manager, and are now leading uh, the organization at a level uh, that's growing. So it's like when you uh, make them feel comfortable <laughs> and, and while everyone is working for their own growth, uh, I believe providing them a platform uh, that is making them grow and that is uh, pro empowering them with uh, a lot of more exposure. I'm sure that is going to uh, lead you a long way. Ankil, uh, yeah. I I would just like to continue that, like what uh, Heli was saying. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, a small thing that I just uh, remember is that during my uh, you know childhood days, uh, my uh, mom used to tell me that you are very good uh, at peeling off potato skin, so okay. you are the best. And I actually was convinced with that. So what I used to do is that whenever uh, you know uh, uh, the potatoes available at at kitchen, I just went there. I, I used to go there and you know start peeling up the potato skin and I actually thought that yes I am best in that so uh, later on I realized that my mom was a great leader she actually convinced me of doing uh, like get the job done so that's what exactly I want to say that being a leader uh, we always need to make sure that your employees you need to make them believe that you are best at your service instead of doing a lot of criticization if you really start appreciating people slowly slowly they will develop and among everyone individually they will start thinking that they are the best and you can and leave the example. Best done. Yeah, leave thank the you example. thank you for that yeah i think uh, leadership is oftentimes uh, uh, you know underestimated in our organizations and uh, thank you for that uh, inside niloy and Anytime you want to peel some potatoes, we sell a lot of French fries. So you're more than welcome to, to come and both peel the potatoes and sell those French fries. Um, but you guys, thank you so much. I think the, for me, as somebody who's been in the restaurant industry for 15 years, uh, this was very insightful. So I'm sure it was extremely insightful for our viewers as well. Uh, you know, got to learn a lot from all of y'all uh, on the various aspects of, of you know, this most critical part of our industry. Um, definitely want to thank Pete Pooja for their constant support uh, through the NRAI Insider's Guide series and for all the other initiatives. Um, and, uh, you know, for who, all the viewers who have participated in this, uh, the presentations by our panelists are going to be available online on um, the NRAI website. So, you know, you have free access to that. Please go, go through them in case you want to fall back, um, you know, and thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.